I'm gonna go over the next problem of division two of 637, 2B. The problem statement is really hard to understand, but I'll try to explain as much as I can. Pretty much all they want us to do is to find the maximum number of peaks for a subarray size K, given the length of the array is length N. But what do I mean by that? So a peak just means that whatever value before and after it is less than it. So number four is a peak because two and one are both less than the current value four. And uh, this four is also a peak because two and one, the values before and after it are both less than four. Okay, we are not considering values way, way after it. Okay, it has to just be one less than the current index and one greater than the current. Index. So if I have like an eight over here, let's say I had an eight over here, we're not considering that checking whether this is a peak or not. Okay, we're only checking whether the left side, one less than the current index is less than the current element and the right side, the one greater than the current index is great is less than the current element also. So that's what a peak is. Now we want to find the maximum number of peaks with subarray size K. Okay, so what do I mean by that? A subarray, contiguous, subarray, what I mean by subarray, I mean contiguous. Okay, so I mean from here, let's say this, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is a contiguous subarray of size K equal to six, okay? And the reason why is because there are six elements of size K in this subarray. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's what I mean by that. We are not picking random elements out of this array. We are only checking for the contiguous subarray of size K. And in this case, it is a subarray of size K because it has six elements, one, two, three, four, five, six, and they're immediately right after each other, right? Okay, we're not picking random elements, that's what I mean. So how you would how would you do this problem? Well, one thing you could do is you could go through every single subarray of size K, add, find the number of peaks in each subarray, then compare them together, and then find the maximum peak. Okay, so in this case, I would just go through from here to here, which is a size six, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. Find the number of peaks here. In this case, it would be one because there's one four, there's only one peak where the both left side and the right side are both less than the current element. And yeah, we are also not including peaks on the bounds, the, the bounds, okay? So if, if this was a peak one, uh, let's say this was a peak. We're not including the peaks on the left side and the right side. Okay. So this peak, this right side is a peak, right? There's two, one, this four is a peak, right? But we're not including that. We're not including on the peaks on bounds. Okay. And that's the reason why we were not including is because the problem statement says that. Okay. We are, we are only considering peaks between these, these, both uh, this, the left side and the right side. Okay, include in inside these bounds. We're not including peaks uh, at the current bounds. Okay, so that's what I mean by that. So let's keep going. So this was only had one peak for the first contiguous subarray. We're going to start from here and then go to the right and then find the number of peaks. So in this case, there's two because if I were to only count the number of peaks between these, these two bounds, not including them, uh, there's only two, right? There's only one four, which two and one are both less than four. And this four, two and one are both less than four. So the next one would be two, right? And then I would have to count from here to here and then find the number of peaks between here, not including the two bounds. In this case, four is a peak because two is uh, less than two and two and one are both less than four, right? Two and one less than four, right? And so we only have one peak. All right, and then our maximum number of peaks would be two, okay? Given size k equals six, okay? Now, how would you brute force this using code? Because I showed you how to do it with pen and paper. Now let's I'll show you guys how to do it with code. Well, let's count the number of subarrays we had to look for. 
So in this case, we only had to look for three subarrays. The reason why, because if I were to start from here, again, if I keep going, am I like keep iterating here? I can't go through six contiguous more from here, right? Like after four, if I were to try to find another subarray of size six, one, two, three, four, five, the six, there's no more because it's out of bounds, right? So there's no, there's no subarray after the, uh, the index of th this index. Okay. After four, there's no subarray after that. So what are the number of subarrays? Well, we, the number of subarrays we checked was only three. Okay. So the number of subarrays is three. And how did we get three? Well, uh, if we look back at our values of n variables of n and k, right? Uh, eight minus six is two. Two plus one is three. So number of subarrays is going to be eight minus six plus one. Two plus one is equal to three. Okay. So the the number of subarrays given size variables n and k, if we plug it in, would be n minus k plus one. Okay. So that's the number of subarrays if you were to brute force it. Okay. So you would loop from one to n minus k plus one, right? And then you would have to check every single bounds. All right, so how do we check every bounds now? Because we have to, we only could check the bounds from the left side and the right side. So we have to consider the bounds of left and right. So uh, let's look at our our array again. Okay, um, we're I'm gonna index from values of one. The reason why I'm doing this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The reason why I'm indexing from one is because it's easier to handle. I don't have to check like, I don't know, zero. I think zero indexing from zero is kind of hard to handle, but I'm gonna index from one. So our left left side, we started from that we had to check is one, index of one, because we're starting a left side that we had to check for index one. Uh, what is our last index that we had to check? It was six, right? From one to six. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so it's six. And what was our next value that we had to check? Two. Two was the index that we started the next index we had to start from. So it's two. And then what did we end at? We ended at seven. And then three is our next value that we had to check. And then what did we end at? We ended at eight. And then four you can't end it at. Okay, so let's think of a given the starting value of left side of the starting value, it went one, two, three, which is exactly what the number of subarrays we had to check. Um, now we had to find the right side, the right side of the ending point, the right bound that we had to end at. So we don't actually add starting plus K or six, because look, we check from one to six, right? So we didn't check from one to seven. We didn't do one plus six and went to seven for our our right side. What we did was we did the left side or start pl uh, one plus five. So our right side is actually going to be equal to one plus five, which is, uh, which is six, right? Our right side is one plus five, which is six. And how do we get five? Five is just K minus one. Okay, so our K is six. We add K minus one. So if our left side, if left bound is start, uh, let's not use start. If our left bound is left, right, our right bound that we're checking is going to equal to left plus k minus one. Okay, so our, this is our right side. So if I were to just loop from uh, left equal to one up to n minus k plus one, right, and then I have another for loop from left looping up to left uh, left up to left plus k minus one. That would get me all the values to sum up for every single peak for each subarray, and then I could just return that. Uh, but that, that problem is that it's O of n squared, and that's not what we really want to do. So a better way is actually to use something called prefix sum. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to count the number of peaks every time we have the array. So here I'm going to use rewrite the array again. 
Okay, so I'm gonna keep track of each peak. So to do that, I'm going to just loop through through the array, and then if there's a peak, I'll set it as one. If there's no peak, I'll put a zero. So this is not a peak, okay? There's no value before it. Uh, two is not a peak, because four is greater than two. Four is a, a peak, because two and one are both great, less than four, so that's one. Uh, one's not a peak. Two is not a peak, because one and four are not less than two. Four is a peak, because two and one are less than four, okay? Uh, one is not a peak because four and two are not less than one, so zero. Uh, two is two is on the right side and it's a little n, so zero. Okay. So now I have the each kept track of each peak. Now all I have to do is just do a prefix sum. So I'm going to add up every single sum. So I'm gonna sum of the current maximum number of peaks at each index. So zero plus zero zero, zero plus zero zero, zero plus one is one. 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 0 is 2, 2 plus 0 is 2. Okay, so now I have a prefix sum. Okay, so now now that I have a prefix sum, now all I have to do is just find the number of peaks and subtract at whichever my boundaries are, and then I would get the right answer. Okay, so what is my... How do I find the, the boundaries that I'm subtracting for each prefix sum? Okay, so let's look at index uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, let's look at this case again that we had to find the maximum number of peaks from 1 to 6, okay? In this case of 1 to 6, I need to find the maximum number of peaks, okay? But I don't want to include the bounds that I'm at. The left and right bounds. So if I'm going to find the maximum number of peaks, and I already have my prefix sum that told tells me each maximum peak at a certain index, if I want to find the maximum peaks of one to six, I let's look at this. I can't just use six, all right? My prefix sum at six. The reason why I can't use prefix sum at six is because prefix sum at six includes the boundary of six. Okay, it includes the boundary of my last bound of uh, my last peak at the current six. So I can't do that. So what I have to do, I would have to use my prefix sum one less than six. So I have to use five. Okay, so my prefix sum of that is five. So I have to do prefix sum of five. Now, I don't want to include my left bound also, right? Because the problem statement told us we can't include prefix sum uh, can include peaks at the left side also. And um, so how would I do that? Well, all I have to do is just subtract the prefix sum at my left one side, my left bound, one. And that makes sense, right? Uh, so I'll, I'll show you guys why this makes sense. So we want to find the number, the maximum number of peaks between one and six. That's this is the maximum number of peaks we, we need to find from one to six, right? One to six, but we don't want to include the one at each bounds of one and six. Okay, so what do I do? So I find the maximum prefix sum at five, and so if I use pre maximum prefix sum at five, I'm not going to include the six. Okay, so that that pushes my prefix sum to have this one to five, but I don't want to include the prefix sum of one also. So I'm going to subtract all the sums that came up to one. So if I were to subtract all the sums that came up to one, so I get rid of this, these two, the my prefix sum, my number of peaks of my prefix sum left over is gonna be between two and five, and that's what we wanna include, okay? We wanna include the max number of peaks between two and five. We don't want to include the boundaries of one and six. So that's why it's this. Prefix sum of five, which is this one, and then subtract by prefix sum of one. Okay, so that's what this gets here. Now, uh, if I were to name these with variable names, right? Because it's not just one, six, five, and one, right? Uh, it depends on what we're looping up to. Let's call this left. And let's call this right. 
my prefix sum that I'm going to subtract of is going to be right minus 1. Right, because uh, it's the index of prefix sum of right minus 1. Right minus 1, 5 minus 1, okay? And then it's going to be subtract my prefix sum of the left. Okay? So right minus 1 and the left. Now, uh, going back to what we said before of uh, the equations that we wrote for left and right, our right values is actually going to be left plus k minus 1 that we found out. So I'm going to substitute that. So my right is going to actually be left plus k minus 1. And then I'm subtracting 1 again because I'm still using substitution, right? Our right was left minus k, uh, left plus k minus one, and then I have to subtract one again because that's sub using substitution that we substitute. Now I guess to sub subtract prefix sum of left. Okay, and that's basically our answer. It'll just be prefix sum of left plus k minus two minus prefix sum of left, and that'll be our answer. Okay, that'll just be our answer. And then our left is going to loop from left is going to loop from 1 to n minus k plus 1. Okay, and yeah, it's just be O of n solution because after we only take O of n to create our prefix sum and it'll be O of n to loop through from 1 to n minus k plus 1 and then find each prefix sum of each of these and then find the maximum one calculating each of the max that's how you do this problem i hope you guys understand i'll show you guys the code now okay guys so i'm gonna go over the code with you guys right now so this i created a vector int which pretty much is just the size of the data array that we're given and i'm gonna index it from index one so that's why my size is gonna be n plus one because that's that's how you index it from one and then i'm going to read in every single loop from one including n up to an including n uh, read in every single element and that'll be indexed from one to that then I'm going to loop from two to n minus one and the reason why I'm going to do from two to n minus one is because this is going to check every single peak okay from the beginning to the end uh, I do n minus one because I don't want to get out of bounds when I do i plus one okay so here I do an if, st if statement if the little index on the left side is less than the current value at i and the index at the right side i plus 1 is also less than the current value at i. Okay, then I do px at i set it to 1. Okay, in C++, in C++ the array is automatically uh, becomes like 0. So when I set peaks at one, I'll just have the values that are peaks going to have value equal to one. Okay. Now I create my prefix sum, and to do that, I just do prefix at I loop from one, including the n, the length of the array, and then I'm going to set the i minus one plus the current value of peaks. After that, I have a maximum values for the value for finding every single max peak. And then I have a left bound because they also want you to print out the left bound. I don't know why, but they want you to do that. Okay, um, so then I loop from i equal to 1 up to less than or equal to n minus k plus 1, which I showed you guys already why I did that uh, using pen and paper. And then I do, I find my current max, which is the current maximum of peaks. I'll take i plus k minus 2 minus prefix sum of i, and that'll get me my current max. Then I check if it's greater than my current max. I'm going to set my left bound to equal my current index that I'm at. And then I set my max vowels to equal to that new vowel, new current max. Okay, so that'll get me my max max uh, max number of peaks. Okay. After this loop is over, I just print out max vowels plus one and then left bound. Uh, the reason why I do print out max vowels plus one, because in the problem statement they want us to print out the plus one. Uh, we, they want us to print out the number of peaks plus one. I don't know why, but that, that's what they wanted us to do. Uh, and then uh, I print out the left bound. The left bound is just whatever index that you last left on. But yeah, that's it. I hope you guys understand this code. Uh, rate, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Peace.